Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches. I'm Fred Woods, ready to teach. Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches. And today we're working on the end of year fifth grade algebra. Just a quick recap of what we're doing with this end of year series. We have the number sense, which there's two videos for that, algebra and functions, which we're doing now, and then coming will be measurement and geometry and statistics. Algebra and math is a generalization of arithmetic in which letters and other symbols are used to represent numbers and quantities in formulae and equations. By the end of fifth grade, you need to understand how to write and interpret numerical expressions and analyze patterns and relationships, such as patterns and relationships such as in here with we have a graph. You need to understand what these marks mean, what we're looking at here, as well as to create an equation using letters and symbols such as this here. Let's dive into algebra. So number one, how many apples were sold all together this week? Well, let's take a look at this graph here. So we can see this is 100, whatever that is, and 200, but this says 150. So that's telling me that this is also 50. So I can just fill it in. Might need it for later. So I'm gonna add this up. I see I have 300, so I'm just gonna write it out as 300. and 150, I'm gonna add 150 here. And I noticed I missed this, so this looks like it's 50, so I'm gonna add that 50 here. So zeros, there's uh, five, five, that's another 100, or 50 and 50, that's another 100. So put that one up here. So I have 500 apples sold this week. I would write it out at like this. That's how I'd write it out. 500 apples were sold this week. Because of space, I, I used the number 500, but I would probably write it out as 500. Let's move on to number two. How many more apples were sold on Monday than on Friday? Well, again, I can look at here, fr Friday and Monday, there was 150 minus 100. And I would say 50 more apples were sold on Monday than on Friday. This is how I'd write it. There we go. 50 more apples were sold on Monday than on Friday. Number three, a number Y is five times greater than two added to a number X. Write an expression for Y in terms of X. If X is equal to three, what is Y? Well, we have a couple of steps to do here. So we need to interpret this. So the number Y, so I'm gonna put down Y, is five times greater than two added to a number. So I'm going to say y is five times, okay, then two added to a number. So I can say here's my number plus two. So it's five times greater than this here. Now all I need to do is just plug in that value for x. So y is equal to, and it's five times x, which is now three plus two, make that better three, and I just solve. So that is also equal to five times three plus two, which is five, which is, and five times five is 25. So y is equal to 25. That's my final answer here. Number four, y is equal to three x plus two. What is y if x is seven? Just plug it in. y is equal to 3x, and I'm going to put in 7 for that, x plus 2 equals, so what's 3 times 7, that is 21, because 14 plus 7 is 21, plus 2, and 21 plus 2 is equal to 23. See, it's just adding in that number there, or substituting that number, so that we can get the equation and get the answer. Number five. So we have three, and that, that means multiplied by, because I have this parentheses, 4y minus two, and then closing that parentheses is equal to what? Well, we're not solving it. It's asking us, well, what is this here? So we just use the distributive property of multiplication to solve this. So three times four is equal to 12. Y minus, and then three times two is six. So 12y minus six, and there we go. 
plug in the number. I could have also looked at this and said, well, wait a minute, I already know that's 12, so it's got to be 12, so I just X out these. And then look at the next number, well, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And then I would have just done that without even working it out. It's so easy to do that as long as I know my multiplication tables. Number 6, plot these points. So this is a coordinate pair, and it goes X, comma, Y. So this is x is 4 and y is 3. So I look at this, I can notice that these are equally spaced. I'm going to assume that this is 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I go up 3. Why? Because it's in the positive direction. 1, 2, 3. And I can mark it as 4, 3 if I want to. There we go. Negative 3, 2. So I'm going to go in the negative direction for x, so 1, 2, 3, and then I'm going in the positive direction for y, 1, 2. I'm just going to call that b. See how I can just, rather than writing all this out, I can just label it right here. Let's look at c. Negative 2, negative 5, so I'm going to go negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There we go. And that's my c. And D is 5, negative 1. So I'm going to go 5 in the X direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then negative 1 in the Y direction, which is right here. And I can label that D. So I have A, B, C, and D plotted. 7. Every car is charged $3 to park. Write the equation for the total charges Y if there are X number of cars. Complete the table and plot the points from the table onto the graph. This is fairly simple because for every car, right here, is charged three dollars. So therefore, Y is equal to X times three, or three X, or three X. So using this here, if I plug in x as 1, I'm going to have 3, 2 cars, that's going to be 6, because it's 2 times 3. 3 cars is going to be 3 times 3, which is 9. So if we come over here, I have 1 car, and it's going to be 1, 2, 3. If I have 2 cars, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And if I have three cars, it's going to count as six, seven, eight, and then nine is going to be right about here. Thank you very much for watching, and please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, to be a mathematician, all you have to be is a person that does math.